Margaret Cavendish was born in 1623 at Colchester, Essex. She was born to wealthy parents, but they did not have any noble titles. She didn't receive any formal education, only tutoring standing for daughters of wealthy families. However, she did have access to scholarly works of literature and became an avid reader. At the age of 20, Margaret became a maid of honor to Queen Henrietta Maria, wife of Charles I, and consequently followed her into exile to Paris in 1644. While in exile, Margaret met and eventually married William Cavendish, the future Duke of Newcastle. The Cavendish family was at the forefront of the intellectual movement of the time, allowing for Margaret to expand her horizons and explore the world of science and literature. Margaret became an accomplished author, publishing numerous works across a variety of genres. She published under her own name, which was very uncommon for women at the time. Her works included poetry, plays, biographies of both herself and her husband, and works on natural philosophy. One of her most famous philosophical works is Grants of Natural Philosophy. This work summarizes Margaret's general approach to natural philosophy. There is no substance of body which exists in degrees of purity. Margaret aims to explain natural phenomena in terms of the motions that lead to the division and composition of otherwise undifferentiated matter. In her work, she also emphasized studying the human brain and body in order to better understand mental health, a contemporary view that wasn't perceived very well during her time. Margaret died at age 50 in 1673, only three years before her husband, William. Maria Marion was born in 1647 in Frankfurt, Germany. She was born into a wealthy family that was known for their involvement in the visual arts. They were especially interested in studying the natural world. She received artistic training from her stepfather and showed an avid interest in nature, especially insects, from a young age. In 1665, she married Johann Andreas Graf a fellow painter who had been an apprentice of Marion's stepfather, he moved from Frankfurt to Nuremberg and lived there until 1670. It was here that Marion taught embroidery and painting skills to young women. It was also during this time that she published the first of her three most prominent books about nature, Nellie's Blue Book, New Flower Book. It was a series of engravings of flowers used as references for embroidery. In 1679, she began to work on and publish her Ralphin book, The Crawler Book series which focused on the life cycles of caterpillars and butterflies. She eventually began to experience marriage problems with Graf, and with her two daughters and her mother, she joined a religious group of Labrathists in order to escape these troubles. In 1691, she moved to Amsterdam with her daughters. Eight years later, she went on the voyage to South America with her eldest daughter. Because of her experiences in South America, she produced another prominent work, Metamorphosis Insect Worms During Immensium. This work had vivid and extremely detailed artistic depictions of insects and plants unknown to Europeans at the time. The book also detailed the life cycle of these life forms and their relationships with each other and the world around them. Marion gave Europeans insight into the new world and influenced future studies of nature with her focus on the relationships between insects and plants. Maria Finkelmann was born in 1670 in Pontus, Germany. From an early age, she was educated by her father, a Lutheran clergyman, and her uncle, who believed she should receive the same education boys received. After her father died, Finkelmann was educated by Christoph Arnold, who was known as the astronomical peasant. He was a lower-class farmer and self-taught astronomer. He helped to nurture Finkelmann's interest in astronomy, and she eventually worked for him. Through Arnold, Finkelmann met Gottfried Kirk, a mathematician and prominent astronomer. Although he was 30 years older than her, Mary and Kirk allowed Finkelmann to delve further into the field of astronomy. They had four children together, and they collaborated on many scientific studies and works. Together, they produced astronomical calendars, weather almanacs, and worked on numerous calculations. Unfortunately, because she was a woman, Finkelmann was seen merely as Kirk's assistant rather than his equal work partner. However, in 1702, Finkelmann discovered a comet, becoming the first woman to do so. She reported her observation of the comet to her husband, who confirmed that it was a comet and subsequently took credit for the discovery. She mostly did this because Winkelmann only wanted to publish her work in German, but Germany's only scientific journal was only published in Latin. Kirch didn't reveal the truth of who discovered the comet until ten years later. Despite this, Winkelmann was not discouraged and continued her work in astronomy. We now go to a live viewing of one of her most important observations, which remains a phenomena in astronomy even today, the Aurora Borealis. She 
Nelson made observations of the conjunction of the Sun with Saturn and Venus in 1709 and the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in 1712. These observations remain important in modern-day astronomy. Kirk died in 1710, leaving Finkelmann to fend for herself against the male-dominated field of astronomy. She fought hard to be respected and credited for her contributions and to maintain a position in the Royal Academy of Sciences, but she was strongly opposed and was booted down the field in favor of blatant, less skilled male astronomers. She later went on to work with family friend Bernard Friedrich, an amateur astronomer who let her use his observatory to continue studying the heavens. With her children as her assistant, she continued to produce calendars and almanacs as she had in the past. In 1716, her son Christie became director of the Berlin Observatory of the Royal Academy of Sciences. Beckelman and her daughter Christine became his assistants. However, the Academy didn't approve of the prominent role she had regained in the field, and once more booted her out of it and even forced her to give up her house when she refused to accept a back seat in the observatory. She tried to continue her work in private, but was mostly unable to do so and died in Berlin in 1720. However, she is now given credit for her observations and is recognized as a prominent astronomer who made several long-lasting contributions.